Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Thank you for being here this morning as we worship our Lord. Uh, Who shouted, bring out your dead? (laughs) That was pretty funny. (laughs) That's okay, we have absolution soon. We'll all be living. (laughs) Uh, Today we will be uh, focusing on on this beautiful truth, uh, that life is a race, and in Jesus we are victorious. May our worship today be glorifying to God and a blessing to you. Amen. Our welcoming hymn, Jesus, Savior, Pilot Me. Please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Now, like uh, the children forward for the children's message. Thank you so much for being in church today. Have you guys ever seen a race before? Yes. Yeah? How do the runners know to go? That's right. Let's see if I can hit the ceiling. Pretty good. It's called a starting gun. And... The starting gun lets all the runners know that it's now time to go, right? That they've been waiting, they've been training, they've been working really hard, and then they're all standing there on the, on the starting line, right? And they're, they're kneeled down, and then the starting gun goes off, and then they know it's time to run, right? And when did they, when did they stop running? That's right, when the race is done and they cross the finish line. And that's kind of like life, right? We would go and go and we don't stop running, until the end of the race, right? And Jesus, in the Bible, he talks about our lives as a race too. And lots of uh, parts in the Bible, they talk about life being a race, and that we're the runners. And we keep running, and we train using the Bible, God's Word, and we learn more about Him. And the starting gun is baptism. Once we're baptized, 
We start running, right? And when we're real young, we start off kind of slow, right? We don't, we don't come out of the gate sprinting right away, but we start a little slow, and we get, we get stronger and stronger. We get faster and faster, and then eventually we cross the finish line, and the race is done. And then what happens? Where do we go? That's right. We go up to heaven, and Jesus is waiting for us. Heaven is like the finish line. And when we get there, Jesus will give us a beautiful crown, the crown of life. And that's all because Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead so that we could too. And so remember, your life is like a race. And you've been baptized, the starting gun has gone off, and someday you'll be able to finish the, uh, cross the finish line, and Jesus will be happy to see you. He'll be so happy, he'll give you a big hug, he'll give you the crown of life, and that'll be the best thing ever. Remember, Jesus loves you, and everyone here loves you too. You can have two then too. All right, remember, Jesus loves you, and have a good week. You can go back to your seat. Please rise. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause to reflect on our sin and the forgiveness we're promised in Christ. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. No, also with you. Since we have received the forgiveness of Christ, we share with one another the peace of Christ.
This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, your divine wisdom sets in order all things in heaven and on earth. Put away from us all things harmful and give us those things that are beneficial for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. The first lesson is from Ecclesiastes chapter 5, beginning, uh, yeah, beginning at verse 10. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This also is vanity. When good increase, they increase who eat them. And what advantage has their owner but to see them with his eyes? Sweet is the sleep of the laborer, whether he eats little or much, but the full stomach of the rich will not let him sleep. There is a grievous evil that I have seen under the sun. Riches were kept by their owners to, to his hurt, and those riches were lost in bad venture. And he is the father of a son, but he has nothing in his hand. As he came from his mother's womb, he shall go again, naked as he came, and shall nothing from his toils that he may carry away in his hand. This also is grievous evil. Just as he came, so shall he go. And what gain is this to him who toils for the wind? Moreover, all his days he eats in darkness in much vexation and sickness and anger. Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toils with which one toils under the sun the few days of his life that God has given him. For this is his lot, everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possession and power to enjoy them, and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil. This is the gift of God, for he will not much remember the days of his life, because God keeps him occupied with joys in his heart. This is the word of our Lord. morning. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I may win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, 
that I may win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wealth, wreath, I'm sorry, but we are imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box this one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Alleluia verse. Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began, began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last first this is the gospel of the lord you may be seated
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our sermon text for this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, as just read, with emphasis upon these words. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Thus, in this week's sermon, let's reflect on Jesus, who alone can lead us to victory that we may run with endurance, life's race, and faith to someday reach the finish line and rejoice with all saints. Which brings us to our first point. In following Jesus in faith, we may spiritually train in righteousness to endure the earthly challenge of the human race. Of course, to many professional athletes, popularity, money, victory are the only reason for playing. Then there are others for which winning isn't everything, who play so that they may not waste God's given gift to them and for the love of the game. But there's probably very few who still don't, in the end, want to win. Furthermore, if a player is a bad sport and decides he doesn't want to play a challenging opponent, it doesn't change the game, but it may affect the outcome. Just as there will be winners, there will also be losers and he may even end up being one of them. Because that's the whole point. Discipline, training, and practice to finish victorious. That's true for football, hockey, baseball, tennis, basketball players, and runners. And the same is spiritually true for all participants in the human race of faith and salvation. Just as the point of playing a game is to score goals, the point of living is to endure to the end finish the race in faith, and save souls. As we, went, as we read in our Old Testament lesson, all earthly riches, money, and possessions are vanity. Each one of us shall leave this world naked as we came and shall take nothing for our toil that we may carry away in our hand. Thus we ought strive in, and not sprint in vain and sin, but with faith in Jesus, the way to salvation. Sadly, men and women of all levels of wealth, status, talent, and geographical divisions may say they don't believe in the Father, nor desire to play by the written rules of his word, want to follow or take part in Jesus' forgiveness, allow the Holy Spirit to coach and train them in righteousness, or walk in any direction that even remotely resembles God's, but rather abide by their own regiments, sitting idly on the sidelines, eating, drinking, sleeping, and being merry on the bench as others pass them by, or maybe joining the rat race instead, training, sprinting, and working hard, but only to climb the earthly ladder of success. However, the only reward that awaits their striving is fleeting and worthless, because there's no opting out of the human race, and only God can deliver us to victory. As it is written in 1 Corinthians, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Which brings us to our second point. With Christ, our head, coaching and leading us as the way to spiritual victory, we, his body, the church, are free to recruit others to join his winning team, a sure lock for salvation. As Paul said in our epistle lesson, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews, To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it for the sake of the gospel that I might share with them in its blessing. 
So to reiterate Paul's focal word from God for us, repeated five times and then summarized in one, if you were keeping track of his compassionately competitive lingo in the verses above. Win, 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 save. They're the same. Essentially, Paul was sent as God's runner into the fields, and his sole goal as a redeemed and called athlete of the Lord was to win people over from all walks of life with the gospel, that they too may receive the prize of Jesus Christ who won them back from sin and death's defeat in hell with his cross and resurrection. He faithfully did so. And as a result, we too have heard the life-saving word of God's victory. Most people don't hide their medals or throw away their trophies. Instead, they display them proudly for all to see and tell great stories of victory. And so we strive to do the same. Of course, we're simply recruiters for Christ. And winning is only everything in the spiritual sense the only prize, riches, possession, and victory truly worthy of devotion, practice, obsession, and worship is found in Christ alone. Thus, Jesus has called us as well as his runners and sent us forth into the fields to faithfully labor for his glory, that his team's spirit working through us might win and save others for all eternity and then spiritually quit us, all of his body, with everything we need to finish the human race, God's word and sacraments, holy baptism, the Eucharist, the word made flesh and blood for our deliverance. Remember, beloved, for us the race has already been won, so celebrate God's life-saving love loud enough that all may hear. Clothed in righteousness, you now wear his winning jersey. So wear God's unifying uniform proudly for all to see that they too may join the Savior of the world at the Earth's conclusion. Now that the starting gun has been sounded, <laughs> the stopwatch is ticking and time's winding down. It won't stop now until the Lord comes, but by then the race will be done. Thus we mustn't stop running, lest we miss the winning point of life and when the buzzer rings at the end of the age, find ourselves on the losing side of the finish line. Therefore, as God's word says for your endurance, be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of faith and of good doctrine that you have followed, having nothing to do with irreverent silly myths. Rather, train yourselves for godliness, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. For to this end we toil and strive, because we have our hopes set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people who believe. Do not neglect the gift you have. Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so you will save yourself and your hearers. Surely, just as scripture declares, the world will end before those on earth even know what's happening. <clears throat> Further, the only after time is heaven or hell, and Jesus is coming. Thus, we must be going. So in faith, let's follow our head and start right now. Consider inviting a friend or neighbor to church on Sunday. It's time to share the gospel of salvation and go for conversion that more souls may be one in Christ at all costs, because Jesus' ascension into heaven from the mountain nearly 2,000 years ago was his two-minute warning to the hum human race, all sprinters born from here on out, that the human race is entering the final lap and will only end in eternal life or everlasting death. Saved by forgiveness, you may now celebrate going to great lengths to recruit others by God's grace to join Christ's body. And with faith in our head, we can start to go the distance with Jesus and someday finish the race victorious to the roaring sound of crowds of cheering angels and saints. Which brings us to our third point. All who follow Jesus shall be first at last. As Jesus said in our gospel lesson, Truly I say to you, 
There is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. In other words, the final score of our soul is is hell O heaven won. Because hello, Heaven won. God's love beat the devil. Good defeated evil. Jesus triumphantly cleared every hurdle of this fallen world and ran the race that we could not, including a life free from sin, death on a cross, and resurrection from the grave. Christ was victorious in every way. God's law and gospel has been fulfilled, and he's awaiting everyone who believes in him at the final finish line to grant them a winner's circle their victor's crown, the merciful reward of faith, trophy of salvation and prize won for us by Christ, eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. In the end, when the time for time to finally finish has arrived and the last day has come, all those who put themselves first shall be last. But we the last and the rest by faith shall be first at last and our everlasting Lord and Savior by grace. Just believe in God's Son, and you too shall be numbered among his number ones. Indeed, regarding the human race, Christ is the only way to victory. Thus may we run life's race in faith till the end, when we'll cross the finish line for the reward of life in heaven. So on your marks, Emmanuel, get set, and let's go. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. We now join in confessing our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you are near to the brokenhearted and you save the crushed in spirit. Deliver us from every fear and trouble that the praises of your name will continually be in our mouths. Lord, in your mercy. O God, with us salvation is impossible. But with you, all things are possible. Give boldness to your church to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, by whose death and resurrection the way to your kingdom has been opened. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, bless all who study at our universities and seminaries. Raise up more church workers, for the harvest is plentiful, but the labor are few. Lord, in your mercy. Spare the servant of your church from love of wealth and from fear of difficulty of their tasks that would gladly set aside every comfort for your sake and for the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, lead our household to find eternal rest in your Son and his word. Give fathers and mothers diligence in teaching their children and preserve us all from the hardness of our heart. Give us urgency to hear the good message of salvation today. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, guide our nations and its leader to true wisdom to promote honest labor, temporal protection, and fitting enjoyment under the sun. Guide your Christians to serve Christ in their citizenship and calling. Do not let our hearts be occupied with the vanities of riches that perish, but with the true joy of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. When the righteous cry, you hear. 
O Lord, and deliver them out of all their troubles. Draw near to save the brokenhearted, the crushed in spirit, the sick, and those in need. Especially prayers of thanksgiving for answered prayers for nine-year-old Delara, who is now cancer-free. Prayers of healing for Ray DeCoin, hospitalized with cellulitis in both knees. Sorry about that. Prayers of healing for Christina Rahm, home recovering after surgery. Continue prayers of healing for Dawn, Joe, Tom, Kim, Alicia, John, Katie, Peggy, Arthur, Gary, Billy, Marion, Doug, Wally, Raymond, and Nancy, all who are being treated for cancer. And prayers for George, Lynn, Susan, Jake, and Michael, and Judy. Lord, in your mercy. Since we have a great high priest, Jesus Christ, hold us fast in our confession through all temptation and preserve us from sin. O Lord, give your blessings to all who draw near to your throne of grace, especially those receiving the blessing, sac blessed sacrament this day, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in times of need. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, your son left his earthly home to do his saving work. And so, knowing what is to leave his family behind, comfort your children who have left home, loved ones, for the sake of the gospel. Set them firmly in the family of the church and sustain them in the hope of eternal life in the ages to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. You should all have taken, uh, you should all have received the worship fellowship card when you came in. Please take the time to fill it out. Uh, and more importantly, your prayer concerns or any praise reports, put them on the back. The pastor and elders get, over, get together on Wednesday and we'll go over them. A couple announcements. Uh, orientation Christmas sh children's shoe box will be ready. Uh, for pickup on Saturday, November 2nd, and Sunday, November 3rd. Uh, and they need to be returned uh, no later than Sunday the 24th. So those days are coming up. Uh, Thanksgiving Outreach is asking for gift cards uh, before November 24th, please. Uh, pick, up good, uh, pick up food gift cards at your local supermarket or, give an envelope, or put them in the giving envelope to support the, the outreach uh, for their finances. Um, and next week is a, invite a friend uh, to Church of Reformation weekend. Uh, so wear red, okay? I'll try to remember that. Everyone's want to forget. Uh, we're continuing with our offerings.
please rise for the operatory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. We continue with the Agnes Day.
Please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn, Fruitful Trees, the Spirit Sowing. Peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.